Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron, this is Scott, this is Tucker, and today we're gonna to talk about what is the Church of Christ. Okay, so thanks for joining us back on episode seven. Um, I think it's episode seven. If it's not, then I'm wrong. <laughs> I think it's the number. Okay, seven. Um, we're going to talk about what is the Church of Christ today, right? So, you know, all through season one, we talked about what is a, identifying the Church of the New Testament. We talked about the Church of Christ. It's one of the names the New Testament uses, right? And so we're going to talk about what is the Church of Christ. A lot of you have reached out and said, hey, look, some of the things you guys are teaching is not what I was taught. And so we say, well, look, let's open up the Bible and and find that. And so we've had a lot of people also kind of curious, what is the church that you guys are a member of? You know, and so we say, well, members of the Church of Christ. And they're like, oh, what denomination is that? And we try to explain, we don't want to be a denomination. We don't want to be a church, anything other than what you read about in the New Testament. And so we're going to talk about what is uh, the Church of Christ today. We're going to have probably two-part episode for this one. The first part is going to be, what does the scripture say about the church? And then the second one, we're going to respond to some common objections that we hear all the time. Uh, I think sometimes people reach out and think we've never heard it before. And um, But we're going to discuss that and try to give you some some answers to that in case maybe you're wondering, hey, do I want to try to find a Church of Christ near me? And what do I need to look for? So um, what is the Church of Christ in Scripture? What would you guys say? What would you say are some places we can start to look for that sort of answer? Matthew 16, 18. Okay. Pull that up. Uh, the church is, you know, one of the things it's called is the the assembly, right? Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. ecclesia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Matthew sixteen, I think, is actually the first place in the New Testament that that you see that the church, the church, um, like in our English translations, and it may be where the first place ecclesia is. I'm, I didn't look, but in Matthew sixteen, you have Jesus, and um, he basically has the disciples. He asks, you know, who do you think I am? Who do men say that I am? And Basically, some people say, well, some say you're John the Baptist, all right? Some say Elijah, other Jeremiah, others one of the prophets. And Jesus says, who do you think that I am? And Peter says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And in Matthew 16, 17, Jesus answered and said, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, Bar means son of, so Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. I also say to you that you are Peter, okay, that's Petros, and on this rock, Petra, I will build my church. The church is built on the confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, 1 mm-hmm. Corinthians 3.11. So it's not built on Peter. It's built on the confession, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Meaning, look, Hades, they had this idea of Hades was the unseen realm. Um, if you have a version that says hell, the Greek word's Hades there. So the, the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. What Some people disagree. What I think it's saying is Hades they had is this unseen realm where the realm of the dead. When you die, you go through the gates of Hades and you never come back. I think Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to die and that death isn't going to stop me from founding my church. I'm going to break the bars of death. I'm going to resurrect and I'm going to establish my church. But basically he says that he's going to establish his church future tense, right? So that's one of the first places where, like you said, church means the the words ecclesia. It's made up of a lot of Greek words are compound words. So ecclesia um, means assembly, but it's ek, which is out of. And klesia, that part comes from the word kaleo, to call. So it's those people who are called out of the world into God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. And so basically you look at the Bible's like our instruction manual, you know? And um, so that's where he predicts the church. When's the church established, Tucker? Yeah, you jump to Acts 2, which is really cool because Jesus was telling Peter that in Matthew 16. But then you jump to Acts 2, and there's Peter, and he's giving the, you know, if you're going to look for something, this is the first like gospel sermon ever. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's so many cool things when something's the first. And yeah. so there's some really cool um, information that's going on here. But yeah, the church is first established in mm-hmm. Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. Um, God adds to the church about 3,000 souls. Mm-hmm. Um, you might say, well, the church of Christ's name isn't there. Well, we've explained that a lot in season one, yeah. but because um, there's a list of names that reflect the one body of Christ. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the first time the church was established. Well, it's interesting in Matthew 16, he says, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Well, what did that mean, right? Well, who ends up now later, I think Matthew 18, 18, maybe, he says he give the keys to the other, the other apostles. But in Acts 2, Peter stands up with the 11 and he figuratively takes those keys and opens up the kingdom, the church, to the people by preaching it. And like you said, you know, it's kind of interesting too, in Acts 2, he sort of does this, Peter does preaching. He talks about a lot of this messianic fulfillment. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. You will not leave my soul in Hades, Acts 2.27. 
uh, even the, the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church, right? My soul, you will not leave my soul in Hades. You will not allow your holy one to see corruption. And then he says, I'm not talking about David because you know where his tomb is and his body is. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Verse 30, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. And he foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ. His soul was not left in Hades. So he basically, verse 32, Jesus, this this Jesus, God is raised up with we're witnesses. So he says, Jesus didn't stay in Hades. His body didn't see corruption. That psalm, that prophecy was about Jesus. God sat him on the throne and the throne you're a king, you're king over what a kingdom. So God sits him on the throne and the kingdom is the church and it's preached for the first time. And verse 36, therefore, let all the house of Israel know that God has made this Jesus that you crucified, Lord, master and Christ, the Messiah. And so the people basically respond, what do we do? And Peter says, what same thing we teach, which is what your church should be teaching, which is you already believe, great. You need to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, forgiveness of your sins. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's that's one of the first things. And like you mentioned in verse 47, depending on your translation, believe it or not, verse 47, praising God and having favor with the people, all the people, the Lord added, uh, the New King James says to the church, some versions say to their number. Um, you can look at what the original Greek says, um, daily those who are being saved, all right? So let's say that your version says added to their number, not a big deal. Flip over to Acts 5.14. Go to Acts 5.14. Um, let's see, verse 13, no, verse 14. And believers were increasingly added to what? It says the, the Lord. Lord. The yeah. Lord, all right? They were added to the Lord, <clears throat> and the church is the Lord's what? Body. Body, the body is the church. Colossians yeah. 1, 18, Ephesians <clears throat> 1, 22, and 23. So whichever way you slice it, yeah. whenever somebody repented and was baptized, they were baptized into Christ, and the Lord added them to his body or his church. That's the church in scripture. Whenever I was studying almost four years ago, Megan's dad, um, we call him Lolo. He was saying like, if you find two things that seem to contradict, it, the Bible never contradicts itself, mm -hmm. but there's something bigger going on. And so like, let's say you read Acts 2.38 and then you go to John 3.16 in different places and you're like, oh, well, this is believe and this says be baptized and mm -hmm. repent. It's like, it's, and then you see like in Romans 16.16, 16, the church of Christ. And then you see different verses talking about the different names that um, reflect the body. Yeah. It's like all those things in one big picture. That's it's like right. You can't just take one verse and build a whole thing around. You got to, you got to look at this and it can be kind of tough sometimes trying to learn it all, but you just take your time, but you take it all as one big picture. And then you see the beautiful picture of what yeah. just being a Christian is. Well, in one of the episodes, this is a good point you made about the different names. What One of the episodes, whether it was the last one or the one before we talked about how the devil, how we're given these different designations for him, the adversary, the accuser, the father of lies, right? Mm -hmm. So like, could you use each one of those and be right in using it? Yeah, that's a yeah, good point. You yeah, you could, okay. So now on a completely different level, look at look at the, the names. Let's look at some of the names for the church, right? Because I think sometimes people misunderstand. Mm -hmm. They think that the church of Christ, we're saying that's the only name you can use and anything else is unscriptural. We've never said that. If mm -hmm. you even look on like, our Facebook or Instagram, a lot of times we'll say like the Lord's church or the New yeah. Testament church. All we're trying to say is the one you read about in your Bible. And so when you go through the New Testament, you see lots of different, what you want to say, names. They're not really names. They're more, they're designations. They're yeah. who owns the church, ownership, right? Um, one, of, one of the ones I like to go to, go to Acts chapter 20. I know you guys have a bunch, so we'll just start. You mentioned one already, Tucker, but let's go to Acts 20. I'm going to, from best of my memory, just try to move through them chronologically, so you're not flipping back and forth. But <laughs> in Acts 20 and verse 17, uh, it says that Paul sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. So the elders of the church, all right? Mm -hmm. Go down to verse 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, that means that's your church, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. That's the word episkopos. It means those who oversee the church. To shepherd, that's the word pastor, to pastor, to shepherd the church of God, Okay, so the church of God, is that scriptural? Yes. Yep, and look who it says, the church of God, which what? He purchased with his own blood. Which part of the Godhead, here's another verse that shows the deity of Jesus, which part of the Godhead purchased the church with his blood? The son. The son, Jesus. So it's the church of God, which he purchased with his blood. The church of Jesus. It's mm -hmm. the church of God, but Jesus is who it's referring to, right? That's one, that's the scriptural name, Yeah. right? Now we'll talk about, after we go through and look at just a bunch of these different names, we'll talk about, you know, why, where we live in South Haven, Mississippi, we choose to use that name, right? Yeah. Go to Rome. Uh, well, you mentioned it already. Go to Romans 16, 16. Do you have it, Tucker? Yeah. Go to Romans 16, 16. 
I'm being like you guys. This one that phone. everyone's <laughs> great, familiar with. Oh, yeah. Great one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. All right. The churches of Christ. Multiple, which means there's what? It's more than one. Yeah. So when you're referring to just one singular, what would you call it? Church. A church of Christ. Yeah. That's not that big of a deal. Someone's like, well, church of Christ isn't in scripture. Churches is. I'm like, yeah. come on, man. You don't use that. It's like, you don't say yeah. like, well, the Bible says disciples of Christ, so you can't call yourself a disciple. Come on. <laughs> give me a break. No one does that. Yeah. People do that, but it's this dumb argument. Um, what are some other ones in scripture that you can think of, like designations or, you know, descriptions of the church? He said church of Christ, church of God. Yeah. Um, I mean, you mentioned earlier, sometimes it's called the body. Yeah, the body. Right. right? Yeah. I mean, that's a, I don't know if we'd put that on a sign or not to say, why not? Where we're going to meet, but I, you but know you what? Could. Mm-hmm. I heard somebody saying, I thought it was a really kind of a cool idea. They said they wish they had a revolving, like electronic sign. That one day said the church of Christ. The next day it said the church of God. The next yeah. day it said, you know, the pillar and ground of truth. The Hebrews 12, the next day, the church of the firstborn who enrolled in heaven. Yeah. The next day, the body of Christ. Because like you drive by and you'd be like, what's wrong with those people? They got schizophrenia. It's like, no, what we're trying to get you to see is that it's a designation who the church belongs to. And scripture refers to it in many different names. I think, yeah, we're just yeah. saying that this is the, uh, we, we are possess- yes. we are the possession of Christ. He, yeah. he we belong to him. Yeah. And yeah. technically, I think in Acts 2.38, in the name of, I think it's I, uh, ace to onoma, which means into the name of. And back in Greek writings, they would mean into the ownership of. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you're baptized, I mean, the body says you're, when, when you're baptized into who? Christ. Into Christ. Into Christ. Yeah. You, you're, he owns you. Like yep. you're basically giving and saying, you own me now. Yep. He's your master. You become his slave. That's right. That's right. I mean, the, the scriptures refer to us as being slaves of Christ. Yeah. Go right. to first Thessalonians. I think it's one, two. Nope. It's just like, what about one, one, some of what Tucker was talking about earlier. You know, you look at all these different yeah, terms. That is what I was looking for. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the sum of God's yeah. word. Yeah. That is truth. Yeah. You, you, you add them all up to figure these things out. Yeah. Right. All right, so I said First Thessalonians one two, and I was like, no, nope, that's not it. And Tucker's like, uh, verse one. Oh yeah. no, no, hey, read good. read verse one. Um, Paul. Okay, you're gonna say that word, Sylvanus. Yeah, that's fine. And, <laughs> and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God and the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. Okay, so he says, you know, Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy to the church of. Did you say Silas? No. No, oh, I thought someone said Silas. I was whispering to myself. Okay, <laughs> it was different. I think different versions Resume? may actually say Silas. So that's why I was like. Hope, yeah. yeah. To the church of the Thessalonians. Okay. So he's writing this to the church in Thessalonica. And they're what? In God the Father and what? Lord Jesus Christ. How'd they get into him? Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Mm-hmm. You are all sons of God by faith. How? For, the Greek word gar that introduces the reason, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have done what? Put, Put on, on Christ. Christ. So when you read in the New Testament, we've said this before. The book of Acts, the establishment of the church, the background for the rest of the books. Mm-hmm. Romans through Revelation. These are all people who've already been baptized. Yeah. That's why this idea that some churches, a lot of churches, a majority of American Christian churches teach, you're saved and then later you should be baptized, doesn't make any sense because you can go Romans through Revelation and you know what you never see the instruction to any person who's already a member of the church is? Be baptized. Never. Yeah. Never Romans or Revelation do you see one time somebody saying, "Hey, you're saved already. Now be baptized." You never see that. Um, whenever I was, whenever I first became a Christian, I remember like trying to share like oh, I'm a part of the Church of Christ. And yeah, at first, like because some people get so turned off by that. Mm-hmm. But like the more you think about it, and the more you see these scriptures and the different names, it's like a very peaceful thing now. To where it's like, yeah, I'm a part of the Church, like of Christ, like a, the the body of Christ that belongs to Christ. Yeah, that's what the name means. Yeah, it, and it's such a peaceful thing to know. Like, we're not saying, like, leave that to become a Church of Christ here at all. We're saying yeah. leave that, become in the church. And it's such a peaceful thing that's to right. know that it's the pureness of the gospel. Like, you're, we're not saying add anything or take anything away. It's like, I can stand here today and know for sure, like, I'm not trying to scare you or trying yeah. to make you afraid of, like, you can. we're not a cult. We're just saying, be Jesus's. That's it. That's yeah, we're are saying, you sure we're, we're not saying, a cult? Are you sure, sure we're not a that's cult? That's part two. We'll talk yeah, about we'll that. Yeah, we'll talk about that in episode two, whether we're a cult or not. I think we're saying, don't denomination just just don't just yes. period like yeah. we're, we're not saying we're we're undenominational in the sense of like our non-dom we're saying yeah. like we don't think denominationalism should exist period yeah. yeah we should all just look at the scriptures and just do exactly what it says 
and talk about it when we don't have understanding and, and work with each other and mm-hmm. and teach only what the scriptures say and and don't get into these isms and yeah these different doctrines and things like that 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 you can't just plainly read of. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, like um, what Tucker said, I know I'll be talking to somebody sometimes and they sort of have this idea. I'm saying leave the Baptist denomination to right. join the Church of Christ denomination as if like we think ours is cooler. That's not what we're saying. Right. We're saying, well, I've used this in the last season. I use it every time I study with somebody. If you took a time machine back 2000 years and you went to Acts 2 mm-hmm. where Peter preaches, Peter's an inspired apostle and he says, Oh, you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Lord and Christ? You want to know what to do? Repent and be baptized. They already believed. Mm -hmm. Okay, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. All right? If you want information on it, I can point you that there's reputable Greek scholars that try to dispel this idea of, well, maybe it means because of. We talked about it last year. Mm -hmm. Or people who try to say they're different in person and number in Greek, which is nonsense because that's not how they wrote Acts 2, the same thing. Basically, it says that baptism was necessary with repentance to have your sins forgiven. Like if you took a time machine back and those people came up out of the water and you walked up and said, what denomination are you a member of? I mean, they're like, listen, he just talked about Jesus. I'm part of him. They'd be like, what are you talking? What, what's a denomination? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me reword it. What division are you that follows Jesus? They'd be like, what, what do you yeah. mean? We we're a member of the church that Jesus is now. Maybe they wouldn't even realize Peter just preaches. Hey, I'm establishing this kingdom on earth, this body of Christ. You're a member of it. And they'd say, what, what, what do you mean denomination? I mean, no, like, are you Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Mormon, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist? They'd right. say, never heard uh, of them. We were right. talking about this a second ago. Are you Gnostic? Gonna... No, never heard of them. Hey, guys, thanks for listening to the show today. We'd like to mention you can download these episodes. They are sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network. We have an app available. You can check that out and get answers to life's biggest questions. My fifth and seventh grade in Sunday school, they asked like, well, why do you choose the church of Christ's name? I think you're about to bring that up. We should talk about that. Why do we carry that? Yeah. Well, that's it. Do we have to carry that name? I would say this, um, you know, if we're going to talk about the next episode, the Stone Campbell movement, which was a group of guys in the 1700s, I mean, honestly, even before the 1700s, but Alexander Campbell was born in like 1778, something like that. There were a group of guys who left, like Campbell was a Presbyterian. He left that. Um, Then he became a Baptist. He left that because he kept trying to go back to the scriptures, right? So in the U.S., the Church of Christ has been a name that a lot of people with that, I'd say, background have used, right? But they didn't, we'll talk about that next episode, so hang tight. But those guys didn't say that was the only scriptural name to use, right? Let me give you an example worldwide. Any of those names are right. Mm Um, I know in the Philippines right now, there is the, what you'd say the Philippine, like most popular religion, they call themselves Iglesia Ni Cristo, N-I-C-R-I-S-T-O, which means the church of Christ, right? They've contacted me because they think that we're a member of the same group and I'm trying to explain, no, 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 we're not. They call themselves the same thing as on the outside of our building, right? But they believe a guy named, I think it was Felix Manalo in 1914 was an inspired prophet of God and he restored the true church and he was inspired, right? Mm -hmm. That is a denomination. That's, in a sense, exactly what the the Mormon church did. They, Joseph Smith, he was inspired of God, they think, right? That's not what we're teaching. So if I was if I was a missionary in the Philippines, I probably wouldn't call the local church the Church of Christ there because that's going to be basically telling people that I'm associated with this national group, right? I'd probably just call it the New Testament church or the Lord's church, right? And I would start teaching people that. So it's not like, I mean, think about this. I've heard stories of people in prison who read their New Testament and they read about the different names. And so they worship in prison with a different name, but it's because they read about it in scripture, right? Yeah. Scripture doesn't say the only scriptural name is this, but in the U S there are lots of other denominations that, and when I say denomination, they have man-made headquarters. Like the church of God has a man-made national headquarters that determines this is what our doctrine is. Right. Yeah. Whereas the churches in the New Testament and the church of Christ in the U S most of them, not all of them are autonomous, which means they're led by elders, and they dictate, hey, we're going to follow the scriptures. Yeah, they have a founder other than Jesus. That's right. They have right. a leader that they typically recognize their roots coming from other than Jesus. Yeah. Similar to how First Corinthians starts up. You yeah. Know, I am of Apollos. I am of Cephas. I am of Paul. Mm-hmm. And then others say, I am of Christ, etc. Yeah. That's what denominationalism is. Yeah. It's people who hold some things in common, but they say, no, we're going to go this particular direction over here because we like the way he teaches this better Mm -hmm. 
than this area. Yeah. And, and, and when you're talking about the Bible, that can be anything. You talked about baptism before. Mm -hmm. That can be the way that you're supposed to have the church organization set up. And what yeah. I mean by that is like, who are our shepherds? Do you have shepherds, elders, whatever? Or do you have one man who's the pastor and he mm -hmm. makes all the decisions? Lead pastor. Lead pastor. Head pastor. And, and that's it. Yeah, that's unscriptural. Uh, are the deacons the board of directors? I mean, no. some places do that. Yeah. So, you know, you mm -hmm. can denominate, make yourself different, separate yourself from what you can find in the scripture in that way. Yeah. And those are not expediences. Yeah. We can talk about that another time, but that's different than just here's uh, the best way we can figure to carry out a command. You're not carrying out a command when you're doing those things. Yeah. That's what sets them apart and makes that different. Mm -hmm. And I think too, like one thing you hit on is, so let's say that, you know, in the U S that name was one that began being used because people were trying to go back to the new Testament, in the 1800s. Right. I'm fine with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's scriptural. What I have an issue too, that you need to be on the watch. We all need to be on the watch out for is for, before I came to GBN for 10 years, I worked in a biotech field and I traveled all over. I went to lots of churches of Christ on the outside of the building. You walk in that door, they are not following New Testament doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of churches who historically have that name because they were connected to that movement, but they have left the they've left the initial principle, which is go back to the Bible. Yeah. So that's why we say reach out to us, let us try to help you mm -hmm. because I can find a lot about a church from their website, right? That's right. Now, sometimes I can't, and I'm not obviously the arbiter of truth. Scripture is, but I'll do my best to say scripture to says this, yeah. to right. help. Yeah, so just, being a just because a building has Church of Christ on the outside of the building also doesn't mean we recommend it. They might be like one of those churches in Revelation kind of in a situation where they're yep. departing, Yep. Mm -hmm. but they don't come back. And so the mm -hmm. Lord removes their candlestick. Yeah. Right? I mean, that, when that happens, we don't know. I don't know. Only the Lord sure, does that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But but it does happen. It does happen. Yeah. And you do see the fruits of it. So yep. you'll recognize them by their fruits. That yep. can be applied to a congregation yeah. as well as it can be applied to an individual. That's right. So you look at what they teach and what they do, and you compare that to what the scriptures say, and you examine that fruit and you see, well, do they, are, you know, they may call, you may say, hey, here's an apple, mm -hmm. but does it really look like an apple? Does mm -hmm. it taste like an apple? Mm -hmm. Did it come off of an apple tree? Mm -hmm. Well, you apply that same principle when you look at congregations yeah you know i'm glad y'all explained that because i remember a couple of years ago when that was first explained it just it just brought a peace in your mind and they're like okay that's i don't know just just seeing it all laid out like yeah. so i'm glad you're uh explaining on podcast because maybe there's someone out there listening like okay now that makes sense yeah to just be that well and i gotta be honest with you like i for years didn't quite understand this concept i felt like if you didn't have the name on your building you were you know like it was mm -hmm. you were wrong and here's my thing too is like believe it or not you grow and you learn more but the one thing too is like, you know, what the people will accuse us all the time of is, well, you're just another denomination. We have to be careful. We don't start making certain statements that go beyond scripture or what do we become? Yep. We're starting to make doctrines right. and then you be, you get to the point where you could become a denomination. Mm -hmm. I think you said something in reference earlier, like you, you, you're not saying quit being a Baptist and then become a church of Christer. Like, no. please don't no. call yourself a church of Christer. Yeah. Like yeah. you're using denominational language when you start to do that. Yeah. You're not a church of Christer. You're, you're, you're a Christian. Christian. You're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Or you're not. That's right. You are yeah. following Christ and, and doing your best yeah. Amen. Yeah. sincerely to, to rightly divide the word and do what it says. Yeah. Or you're not. We don't. Mm -hmm. We're not a denomination, and when you use that kind of language, you give credence to the people who say we are. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, it'd be a per in a perfect world. It'd be nice if every church building ever, when you looked at the outside of the building, you knew exactly what they taught. And if they had, if they had the name, if they had a biblical name, let's say that it'd be nice if every time I drove down the street and I saw a biblical name, I was like, "Oh, Church of God." That's used in First Corinthians chapter mm -hmm. one, or verse two, and Acts twenty twenty eight twenty nine. I bet they teach true doctrine in there. But that's not, we're not in a perfect world, obviously, right? Yeah. But like, that's why we say, reach out if you want some help. We'll do our best. And then you need to be like the people in Acts 17, 11, the Bereans, who listened to Paul, who's inspired, an apostle, and they checked to see if what he was saying backed up with the Old Testament scriptures, likely, maybe the New Testament, because it's already Acts 17. But they checked the scriptures, Yeah. right? And so what I'm saying is like, don't think just because we're on a set and we have Bibles and we sound like we know what we're talking about, you should not just take our word for it. You should open this right. up and check it. And if you want to challenge me, email us. We'll talk. I don't mean challenge like like we're getting angry. I'm saying if you want to discuss it, reach out. Like we will discuss it with you. We've yeah. had lots of people that email us and we respond back and they're like, wow, I didn't think you guys were going to respond. It's like, I'm not going to tell you reach out and then ignore you. Like I've reached out to a lot of religious groups before and they just don't ever answer me. But yeah. even when we're super busy, we make it a priority to respond to people that reach out because you got a soul. And we have a responsibility 
to help. That's why we're here. That's why that's we're here. There. That's the yeah. whole purpose of what this show is and yeah. the organization. Try to help people. Yeah. Try to do our best. For free. We don't charge you. Right. If you reach out or you call us on the phone, we're not going to say, hey, uh, that's great. Let's talk about it. We need to have your credit card at $10 <laughs> yeah. an hour. And no, it's free. Ask you for we're not going to ask you for money. Yeah. No. no. It, and isn't it something that, as scripture warns us so many times, even like right after Jesus leaves to go back to heaven, he's like, watch out because yeah. there's going to be wolves and false gospels and false teachers mm -hmm. and divisions. And it's like, we're not talking about just something crazy or like, oh, this guy's asked for money. We're talking about like, just watch out for the nitty gritty stuff because if they're, if right after he left, all these divisions started popping up, like you said, I'm of this person, I'm of that person. Shouldn't we do that for ourselves? Just yeah. like, I mean, and so I did it once and it shocked me and Scott, you studied and then Aaron, you left, but came back. Like we've all had stories, but like to have, we all been pointed back to just the simple gospel. Amen, man. And it is, yeah. God made it simple. It is foolish to think that God who can create the entire universe and do all of the wonders you read about in the, in the Bible, old, new, can't manage to communicate clearly enough for a man to understand clearly enough mm -hmm. what he wants them to do mm -hmm. and be in agreement. Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't write a convoluted, hard-to-understand letter no. for us. The Holy Spirit gave us something that we can comprehend because God wants us to comprehend it and be united. We yeah. even have him teach that we should be united explicitly mm -hmm. in Scripture mm -hmm. multiple times. Command. So, it's a command. Absolutely. Yeah. So this idea that we can't all understand it the same. Nonsense. I mean, it's if it's not blasphemous, I don't I don't know what it is. Well, what you're basically you're whenever, insulting the integrity of God. Whenever you say we can't all understand it alike, what you're basically saying is that God, like you said, who spoke the universe in existence, wasn't smart enough to give us something that we could all understand alike. Right. I mean, you can. That's just an excuse because people are like, well, we're just, we're going to have to agree to disagree. We can never understand scripture. We're all going to interpret it differently. Listen to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse two, uh, 10. Now, I plead with you. I think that's a um, petition verb, which is like one of the ways the Greeks, you know, they didn't have underline or bold or like make the font larger. I guess you could mm -hmm. write larger. <laughs> Paul wrote with large letters. <laughs> but what he's saying is that's the way that they would petition verbs would show you, hey, listen, focus is important. He says, I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, like I plead you in Jesus, in Jesus' name, pay attention, that you all speak the same thing and there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined in the same mind, the same judgment. Paul is inspired by God. He thinks it's possible, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Jesus prayed that we all might be one That's in the right. garden right before what? That's right. Yeah, for the crucifixion, for exactly. his arrest. Yeah. Don't you think that's a little important? Mm -hmm. He's bleeding. I mean, you know, you can do some study on this. What we talked about, hemohydrosis, something. Uh, hematidrosis. Uh, there you go. He's sitting there sweating blood mm -hmm. and praying that we would be united. Mm -hmm. And what has mankind done with that? Yeah. Found just, excuses to not be. So that's what we're saying. Yeah. Just be his. Yeah, because yeah. people, he said in Acts 20, they would draw away disciples after themselves. Wolves in sheep's clothing. So many people are like, that guy can't be a false teacher. I'm like, why? Because he didn't look like one. That doesn't matter what he looks like. Jesus said they'd be wolves in sheep's clothing. They look like sheep. Pride, man. The only way, inwardly, they're ravening wolves. The only way to tell what they're saying is right or not is to open up his book. Yeah. Thanks for hanging with us on the Authentic Christian Podcast. We'll be back. We'll see you next episode. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today.